Okay, in this video, we're going to go over another new feature in the 1.2.0 beta 1 version of Ciro noise reduction. Finally came to the platform. I'm really excited about it. I'm sure a lot of you are as well. I'm going to start this video off just giving a little bit of an overview of what noise reduction is, and then we'll move into looking at the new tool and how to use it and give you some examples and a demonstration. My name is Rich, and you're watching Deep Space Astro. So before we start looking at the new noise reduction feature, let's talk a little bit about image noise. Image noise can be caused by numerous different things. The first, and you've probably heard of this one quite a bit, is called salt and pepper noise. It's also referred to as impulse noise. This type of noise generally comes from hot and cold pixels. Now, with the sigma rejection method used when you're doing your stacking, that usually takes care of these hot and cold pixels, but sometimes it may not catch all of them and you have to deal with them in post. Second type of noise, additive white Gaussian noise. And this type usually is from electronic fluctuations in your imaging camera or heat generated on the sensor of your camera, uh, specifically an uncooled camera. Now a cool camera will help reduce some of that um, as well as a lot of it can be reduced in stacking as well, but there's always still a little bit left over. The third type is Poisson noise. <laughs> That's my French accent. French? So, and this type of noise can be caused by electromagnetic waves, again, from the cameras. So that's just a quick overview of the different types of noise. It's probably not really helpful for what we're going over today, but um, just making you aware when you hear the word noise, right, it's not just from one thing. There can be multiple reasons that you have different types of noise in your images. So to help reduce the noise in your image, the new noise reduction feature within Cyril employs the non-local Bayesian algorithm. That's the base noise reduction algorithm that it uses. And as we'll see as we get into the program, there are three secondary noise reduction methods as well, but they're all based in part on the non-local Bayesian algorithm. We'll refer to it as NL Bayes from here on out, and that's how it's referred to elsewhere if you read any other articles or watch any other videos about it. It's one of the same. So we're going to jump over into Ciro. Again, we're working with version 1.2.0 beta 1 right now. This is data of the Rosette Nebula that I have that I have already cropped done a background extraction on it and a photometric color calibration. We're just talking about noise reduction here. So this is the image that we're dealing with right now. So if we come up to image processing and noise reduction, here are the options that we're presented with for our noise reduction process. Before we start, keep in mind the best time to apply noise reduction is before you do any stretching to your image. So if you notice down here, I have my mode, I'm in auto stretch. I thought it was the go to linear we'd see the linear view, right? There's no stretching that has been done to this image. Now, with that being said, you can apply it to an image that's already been stretched, and it may in fact clean some noise up after you've done your processing and such, but to get the best possible results, it's recommended to run this on a non-stretched image. Go over some of these settings here. The first one I wanna talk about is a cosmetic correction. By default, it is turned on. Remote, remove salt and pepper noise, right? We just spoke about that. It's recommended that you always leave this on unless you've already done cosmetic correction. And when I say that, I'm gonna close this. What I mean by that is up in image processing, there is a cosmetic correction function. So if you've already ran cosmetic correction, then when you go into your noise reduction, you can in fact unselect that. I have not ran cosmetic correction, so we're gonna leave that selected. Color noising, independent channels. Most of the time you're gonna leave this one off the only time that you would need to turn it on is if there were some strange artifacts after one of the denoising algorithms were applied to your image. If you start seeing some kind of artifacts, then you can undo your changes with your undo button up here, tick your independent channels button, and hit apply, and it'll break out and denoise the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel individually for you, and that may help with any artifacts that you have. So let's do some demonstration here. The default option, is no secondary denoising stage. Um, we got four of them under secondary denoising algorithm. For me, I kind of would have liked to seen this option outside of this section, but I think it's pretty straightforward regardless. So with no secondary denoising stage selected, we are just using the NL Bayes algorithm and that's it. The modulation, I'll show you an example here in a little bit, but basically one is full noise reduction. If you slide it over to zero, that means no noise reduction. So you can play with the modulation, and I'll give you an example of when you would use that here in a few minutes. So for now, we are just gonna run the non-secondary denoising stage. I'm gonna come down here and hit the button with the number one on there to get me to 100% size of the image. So we can see a little bit more what's going on. 
And you know, when you're doing your denoising, there's no need to zoom in past 100%, right? At that point, you're probably not seeing noise, you're seeing pixelation. So don't beat yourself up if you're zooming in super close, pixel peeping, and you think you still see noise. So we're set, and we're just gonna come over and hit apply. So you can watch it do its work on the console, and down on the bottom here where it says it's denoising. This first option doesn't take very long, just a few seconds. And it is done. So looking around, I'm going to come back and hit my undo button here. So there's our before and there's our after. You can see it's really noticeable here. This is our before. It's really noticeable up here. If you can see the little specks of red. And if I reapply it, you can see how it smooth it out nicely without without overdoing it our second option is uh, the ASCOM VST with exact unbiased inverse so this one is is when the image has been determined to be photon starved right it's a different type of noise like the three that we were talking about in the beginning of the video it's it's math <laughs> Right, so there, there's mathematical formulas behind all of this stuff. I don't want to get real deep into it, and to be honest with you, I probably couldn't get real deep into it to explain exactly what it's doing and how it's doing it. But there's plenty of information on the internet if you want to look up these algorithms. These these algorithms aren't something that Cyril has come up with. They're, they're mathematical standards for removing noise from photography. So the data is out there if you guys are interested in it. So. We're just going to go through each of these real quick and um, see if we can tell the differences between them. So we're going to hit this ASCOM VST one now. Uh, this one also runs relatively quick. The only one that really took a lot of time for me is the next one we'll look at, the Data Adaptive Dual Domain Denoising. So come over here and pay attention to the edges again and maybe around these dark areas too. So this is, this is the denoise version and I'll undo it. And, you know, actually the... Well, I can see a little difference. It's probably hard to tell in the video. But I think I think this one probably does a slightly better job of it. Again, just play with the settings and see what you like, the different types. Well here you can I just noticed too. So if you want look at these dark areas right in here. So that's that's with the denoise applied. If we back it up, that's before. So that, that looks a lot better. And you know, I've ran through this on a handful of images and so far, I, I like the ANS, ANSCOM one, the job that it does. So let's undo this one, and we're going to do the uh, the data adaptive dual domain denoising one. And we'll hit apply for this, and like I said, this one takes a few minutes. So the data adaptive dual domain denoising while this is running, this algorithm will take the base denoising algorithm, the NL Bayes method that was used up here, to use as a guide to apply the secondary algorithm to your image. Again, in a nutshell, not the math expert. <laughs> okay, now it's finished and this is our end result. Let's go back and undo it and see if we can see the difference. So again, like watching around the edges and the darker areas here, this is before and that's after. You know, and that one does a good job too. It did take probably about five minutes on my machine. I don't know, it, it looks like I'm seeing a little bit, pulled a little bit more detail around these darker regions. But yeah, I mean, it did it did a good job. It didn't overshoot it. It didn't smear anything. All right, so let's undo this one, and let's go over our strengthen operate subtract iterator SOS for short. We select this one. What this algorithm will do, it'll take your specified set of iterations, run the denoise algorithm against it, meanwhile injecting the original image into it to kind of keep some of that noise in there not to completely just smear everything out. And when it takes that original image and injects it into these iterations, and that's what this row setting is for, the amount of that original image that will be injected back into these iterations. So defaults are three and point two. Again, more settings you can play with to get your end result. And because I want to show you how the modulation slider works here, I'm gonna bump this up to five iterations and hit apply and we should get a little bit of smearing that i personally wouldn't want in the image and we'll show you how you can take care of that if that happened in any of these noise algorithms that you would select if you get any kind of smearing where it's way too smooth that's when you can play with the modulation and start backing it down so we're on iteration three or five right now we'll let that finish and get back to it okay so it's done and may not be very easy to see within the actual DSO itself, but if you, again, you look up here in the edges, you can see how it's smeared 
just is smoothed out and it's also taken on like a, a reddish grayish tint it just it looks horrible so well, I'll show you a before so you can see it actually so there's our before and there's our after and you can see the smearing all around the fringes here even inside of some of the the nebulosity towards the edge so we're gonna undo that I'm gonna leave this at five and undoubtedly I have those kind of effects because I cranked up the iterations but there can be times using any of these algorithms that it may be a little bit too aggressive with the modulation again just depends on your data so if you see something like that you can come down and possibly correct it just by cranking down your modulation so we're going to take this down to 0.5 instead of 1 and then hit apply and let it go through its thing again same settings with five iterations and a 0.2 on the row okay so that's done and let's go back to the before and then the after and you can see now that reddish gray smeared smooth effect that we had around the edges has been sorted out because we adjusted the modulation so if you see anything happening to your image like that when you're running through your noise reduction try and adjust your modulation so one last thing to note again zero with this release has greatly enhanced their scripting engine so refer to the documentation if you're a scripting person or a command line person they have commands you can run right from the command line if you don't want to use the user interface or if you want to test out the command line functions of everything so you can put together your script maybe you have a bunch of data that always seems to process the same way because it's the same equipment that you shot it with it can really decrease your processing time if you're into that thing so check the documentation for that there's way too many commands to cover but there's a lot of cool stuff in there i use some of those commands in my fake hubble palette script that i posted a uh, video about a few days ago so uh, it's really cool stuff if you if you like to automate yeah, I definitely suggest that you check it out so that's noise reduction in serial another great feature they've implemented for us in this beta release just like everything else I'm sure it's just gonna get better no bugs in this one that I could see it's a very simple user interface and command line prompts all the hard work is happening behind the scenes for us right so it's really nice to finally see noise reduction come to serial hopefully this helped you guys and kind of cleared some things up for you with using the tool again I appreciate everybody's time if you found the video useful please give it a like and share and until next time clear skies